on guys welcome back to the channel today we have a fun music video tutorial for you guys this is baby hot and Ali choppa scat pack video is shot and to my knowledge edited by jolo i'm gonna leave a link to his instagram down below make sure you guys go follow him because he does some great things in this video that I love to see. He takes a lot of simple techniques that you can do within Premiere, within After Effects, things like masking and motion effects, and he puts in creativity, he puts in vision, he matches the energy to the song, and he puts in a lot of time to make everything come together and flow in this very creative way. It's cool to see how things are evolving in the editing scene, and that's really the key, taking these basic tools that we're gonna show you how to do step by step and putting your own twist to them. Some people have different tastes and different styles. Whenever you have something new, whenever you have something different, you see people notice that they respect it. it makes the video interesting so let's go in break down some of this stuff i'm just gonna let it play here um, and just give you a rough idea because there's a huge amount of stuff going on and then we're gonna hop in start with the basics and start moving up the chain here and talking about some of the things you can do to create the movement to create the masking to create some of the different things that are being utilized in this way in this fashion you can see there's a bunch of craziness going on and they have full control over the scene that's what i love about it sometimes you can be limited by a lot of the movement in the scene if there's not a lot of energy you always can use your editing software and a lot of these different techniques that we're going to show you to fully control what the viewer is seeing so we got a lot of different transitions we got a lot of different things with masking in different ways using different forms of the mask and transitioning in and out of them it's cool to see people just have fun with the video and make something like this where there's just a bunch of craziness going on high energy video always love to see that kind of stuff so let's get started if you guys do enjoy remember to slap like on the video subscribe to stay up to date to all these tutorials all this information that we are dropping on you guys and comment down below if there's anything you'd like to see chsm gaming commented and put me on to this video so shout out to you guys all credit goes to you in this network that we've built up over the years so thank you guys so let's hop in and get started we're going to be doing the majority of this in after effects it's a lot easier to mask so in premiere i'm going to click this little new item button in my project bin and i'm going to create a new transparent video we can drag this into our timeline like this and this is just going to be our placeholder into after effects if you guys have after effects in premiere installed you can right click on here go to replace with after effects composition all right so our linked comp right here is now in after effects i can go ahead and delete the placeholder video and start building out my composition all right so we're going to start off by showing you the basics of creating different motion for your elements like the title using masking to kind of hide those things up so you saw it there at the very beginning and then here's another example right there so we'll start off simple here let me show you how we can take a simple shot like this and how we can add some different motion to the logo or have it swivel out rotate out and reveal itself first off we want to isolate the logo because again that's what we want to add all that crazy movement to so i'll select my layer i'm going to go ahead and click Control d to duplicate it and i'm going to name the top duplication logo and i'll leave the bottom to background so on our logo layer i'm going to go up and grab my pen tool you can also click g to quick select that and i'll make an easy little mask around this logo and that's why I use after effects for this it's a lot easier to mask with the bending joints being able to zoom in easy so i prefer that over premiere for stuff like this so that looks good we want to click m and this should be on add so if i was to hide the background this is what we have again you guys can adjust that if you need to you can open it up add a tiny bit of feather like that and let's bring back our background layer so now if we scroll along this is moving footage and you see how our mask kind of slides off of the area we want it to so what you can do with an easy uh, little cutout like this you can just click m to show your mask you can right click on the mask and you can click track mask so we'll go ahead and do that it should pop up your tracker window here keep it at the defaults and just click play so now after effects will go through and make all those little keyframes again this works best when you have something easy like a logo when you don't have a lot of motion Later on, I'm going to show you how you can use rotoscoping or masking out more advanced movements like people waving their arms around. This is just absolute basics. And once our track is done, you should now see all these keyframes that After Effects created for us. You select the logo. You should now see that the mask is following along with our movement. So great. That works for easy stuff like this. So we'll open up the transform for our logo. We want this to start up here and then sort of swivel down. And I'll show you that one more time. Just like that. I'm going to take my position and just move it up vertically right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and click to set this keyframe, activate the animation there. And I'll drag a tiny bit. And then I'll go ahead and just click reset. So we created a tiny little animation here where it starts up at the top and it moves down. 
And let's actually add some more interesting looking movement because this looks very stale. What we can do is click toggle switches and modes. You're gonna see these two, these three little circles here. This is your motion blur switch. So for this logo, we can enable the motion blur switch. By default, it should already enable it in the composition. So make sure that's on to see it. And now you can see the dramatic difference um, with that on and off. It just makes it a lot faster, more realistic. If you guys want to, you can control how that motion blur looks. It's gonna change depending on the velocity. So if I was to grab the keyframes, make them faster, you can see how the blur increases. And what you can also do is go up to composition, comp settings, and in advanced, you can control the shutter angle here uh, if you want more or less motion blur. So that's really the absolute basics that I wanna show you guys. Keep those beginning steps in mind. The fact that you need to mask, and again, I'll show you an easier masking tool for more complex stuff. Um, adding the motion blur and then controlling your layers. We're gonna use that concept for all of the different effects I'm gonna show you in this tutorial. Now to finish this up, we're gonna move away from those three important concepts and this is more specific to this situation. So don't get confused. Think you're gonna have to do all this for every little clip. So to finish this, to make it kind of reveal from the car, instead of creating a second mask here to cut it away, because we have all these motion keyframes, we have all these mask keyframes and masks, on this layer, it's a lot easier just to just to create a little mask layer. So this is a nice little trick. What you can do is right click in your gray space, go to new and go to solid. And we'll just name this mask. I made it a black mask, but it doesn't matter. You wanna just hide the visibility of that. And on this mask layer, we want to draw the mask where we want our logo to reveal. So something like this along the um, edge of the hood here for the car. Again, draw it up so that uh, your logo is inside the mask. Now what we're gonna do is click M and just change that mask to subtract. So now to get your logo to kind of respond to that mask we just made, all you wanna do is click toggle switches and modes and track mat right here. You wanna change your logo to alpha mat mask and make sure the mask layer is right above your logo layer or this won't work. So alpha mat it, there you go. So now it's disappeared without us having to fumble around and um, try and get it to work with this layer that again, we've already done all these adjustments on. Again, we have motion in this clip. And if we drag, you see how that purple line starts to slide up. Instead of doing a track mask, this is pretty simple. It's just one line. I can go to the mask layer and again, make sure you're showing that mask. Go ahead and just keyframe mask path at the beginning, drag a bit, and I'll just drag this down like that. So simple, it's all we really had to do for something like this. And last little thing I'm gonna show you here, how to remove the logo so that um, it looks like it's coming out of nowhere. You see this is still in here. So on my background layer, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to mask the uh, logo here again. Now you see the default for that mask is set to add. So let's this time set it to subtract. So it should be cut away, fumble with the mask here if you need to, and you can track the mask if you wanted to. Either way, our logo is now missing, but we have this ugly sort of um, transparent gap where the logo flies into. So to cover that up, just grab your background layer and click Control D again. Rename this to Cover Up. On this Cover Up layer, I'm gonna go ahead and just mask out this sort of chunk of the car. I wanna click M, make sure that um, we delete the subtract. So we only have that new Add. And if I click V and drag it over, you see how it disappears. Let's add a tiny bit of feather. And so things don't slide around just so it's this base color and nothing else. Because again, that is moving footage. And right click on the cover up, go to time and just freeze frame it. And then what you can do is if there's any mismatch of color, you can look up a little curves effect, drop it on your cover up and just try and eyeball it to match everything else. That looks pretty good, pretty hard to tell there's anything going on there. Now let's go back to the fundamentals for creating these effects. Again, those were more specific for covering a specific part up. But what you can do here, some added motion, if we open up our logo layer, before we just made it transform so that it slowly, so that it drops down. But you can get more creative with that. Let's maybe drag halfway and take a rotation and just sort of like bump it to the left, move it here and then set it to zero. So you can have some crazy things going on like that. All right, so let's get into some more fun, crazy stuff with masking. With all these crazy subtraction mask movements, splitting the screen open, things like that. All right guys, so what we're gonna do here, to make this split open, I'm going to click Control D on our first transition clip uh, to duplicate it. And I'm gonna name, I'm gonna name the bottom uh, left and I'm gonna name the top right. So on the left clip here, I'm gonna go up and you should have some shape masking tools if you alt click 
you can change the shape. Go ahead and just grab the rectangle tool and just try and make a mask right down the middle. And then let's click to right and we'll do the exact same thing. And if you need to, and adjust the masks. If you wanna grab specific joints, you click the layer uh, and then you can move these. If you wanna move just the mask, you click the mask. And then if you hold down control, you can move just the mask. So now what we have here is each of these sides isolated. We're gonna do the same thing, just make them, just change a little position keyframe, add some motion blur. So let's go ahead and go down to the transform for these. Let's have them both open. And let's just keyframe both of these at our starting position. Move a couple of frames. And then let's take our position and just crank it over. So you could pay attention to the values if you want an exact. I'm just going to do a rough little example of it. Make sure you see your motion blur switch and just activate it for both of those. So now you should have more of a realistic blur. You see that this is starting at the beginning. It's kind of all blurry. Let's go ahead and just grab all these keyframes. So just holding down shift and just move them over so that we have a little bit of like normalcy before it splits open. And it's kind of bothering me how these masks aren't perfect. So let me just... Now in the original here, it looks like there's a bit of uh, distortion going on on the side clips whenever it's split. So an easy way to be able to do something like that, let's have them both open again. Let's just try to cover up the mask, give us a bit more space. You can use the CC scale wipe effect. So in your effects and presets, search for CC scale wipe. You can just drop this on one of them and set it all up. So we'll maybe just go to like 90 and we'll start the stretch at zero. Find where the split's about to happen right there. And we'll go ahead and keyframe the stretch. So it starts at zero right when our transition starts. And we'll just go to the end, have it sort of pull out like that. So here's what that looks like. Bit more distortion going on just to give it a bit more coolness. And you can do the same on the left. So we'll go ahead and just copy and paste this onto the left version. So control V. So again, in your effect controls, control C, go down to left, click into your effect controls, control V. And whenever you do that, uh, if we open up effects, you want this to be lined up. So you see, this is the frame where the keyframe, the direction starts. So we'll just grab the effect keyframes and make sure that these are two are lined up. This and this. And also you want this to go the opposite direction. So this is going 90 degrees. We want to make sure that this is going negative 90 degrees. There we go. And that looks pretty cool how it's like pulling and stretching the logo. So you may get different results with different clips. So now let's start having our freeze frame starting to pop out of here. We can go to the first frame of our second clip. And later on, I'm going to show you how to rotoscope to kind of get a moving uh, isolated subject for now. Um, in the main example, they just use simple freeze frames, no movement going on here, just a normal cutout. And they just went crazy with all the cutouts. So I'll show you how you could do something like that. Want to go to your first frame on your next clip. And let's actually just duplicate this. So we'll select it, control D to duplicate, rename this to freeze frame. And then we'll right click on that and go to time and freeze frame. So now if I scroll, this should just be frozen on top. And it's as simple as just going up, grabbing your pen tool again, and making a little cutout of this freeze frame. All right, so we will connect that together. We now have our freeze frame. And what I can do here, uh, I can just grab this layer. So I'll take freeze frame, place it over top. And you can see there it is. And you can control the structure of this. So you saw in the video, it kind of started underneath these. So we'll put it under right and left. And you can see how we can have it sort of fly out from underneath the layer. So you maybe kind of scale this down to start, move it to the right at our beginning position. We'll just activate our keyframes and then we'll move in a bit and let's just make some movement happen. So I guess we'll like pop it out. Let's put it above right, but not left. Maybe the other way around, I mean, above left, not right. So that it'll pop out and be in front of this one, but still behind this window here. So you can give it a bit of depth just by changing the layer structure. And again, to make all these movements look less robotic, you want to activate your motion blur switch. There we go. And we'll have them pop out and do whatever. So you guys can get creative with this. I'm not showing you how to do exactly everything that they did in the video. I just want to show you some of these things you can do to manipulate your footage and then let you guys do with it what you will. You can also change around the depth. So now it's behind. What we can do is have it sort of move all the way out. So like that. 
and then we can have it start to set keyframes here to start the movement, have it move it back over top of the right one. So to have it move it back over top of this, so it's not underneath again, what we need to do is at this position, click Control Shift D to cut the layer and just move this bit above the right part. So now whenever we go in and add a transform, so again, we'll come in here, add some keyframes, move to the end, and uh, we'll move this over to the right. Now it'll be over top. So again, being able to control our layer like that, have it change the depth. And then um, you can even have it be like a little pop in transition just by at the end here, just clicking reset and putting these at the very end. And you wanted to just end it right there so that you have this smooth little transition right into the moving footage. So that's a cool little example. They also have a lot of subtraction mask going on here. So what I can do is take this first freeze frame, the one that's kind of behind, and we'll click Control D. I'll name this sub freeze frame. So this will be the one that's subtracted. And all they really did there, you can just go in and add like a fill effect onto here. And you can change the color to whatever you want. So if you want it black so that it looks like it's kind of cutting out from whatever is beneath it, whatever's beneath it, you can do that. And just make sure you change around the motion so that it's different from the beginning. So go to transform and we'll just maybe move it down even more. So you can have this sort of secondary thing going on there with the subtraction or whatever fill color you choose for that. All right, and then in this crazy little sequence you got going on here, see how you have the clone as sort of this imprint, creates all these mirroring and then there's clones flying around. A lot of stuff going on. Let me show you some different techniques uh, that you can take away from that. So when we, whenever we move into the transition scene, I just extended this clone with the fill effect over here. So now it's over top of our second footage. What you can actually do is if you place this right above the uh, transition clip, as you can see here, you can change around the alpha map and there's some cool things you could do with that. So if we could, so if we click toggle switches and modes, you can see your track mat here, at the very bottom, let's go ahead and just mess with this. So you can put it to alpha mat and now see um, the footage inside of the silhouette that you have. You can put it to alpha mat inverted. Now, if I click this, you can see now this cutout is cutting away this footage. So there's some cool stuff you can do. You can take your footage and what I think they did was just duplicate it. So control D, put this to no track mat and put it all the way underneath. And then just scale it down a bit or just reposition it a bit. And you can see how you can have sort of this mirroring effect going on here. All the different footage is playing within that cutout that you select. You can even take the cutouts. Uh, you can click Control D. Keep repeating that. Can't get confusing with all the different layers going on, all the craziness. So I hope you guys aren't overwhelmed by this too much. So we'll scale that down. And you can layer the alpha mat. So again, this is the smaller clone that we just brought in. Again, it can get confusing with all this, but I'm just going to place this above and then do the same thing, alpha mat, alpha mat invert, and then control D, place it below, none, click S and scale it down. So as you can see, you get this sort of mirrored effect. I know that can be complicated for some people, it's pretty confusing messing around with alpha mats, but if you play around with it, you can definitely get some cool stuff. This sort of tunnel, sort of cutout tunnel. And then of course, if you want things to be flying around, you can go ahead and just take the normal freeze frame, D, Start it from like right here. Make this a 3D layer just so I can actually move it a bit better. And I'll take my Z axis and kind of just shoot it past the camera. So again, a little repeat of what I did there to create that kind of towards the camera clone. Took my original freeze frame, placed it over top of the silhouettes. Want to click toggle switches and modes. Just like how we turned on the motion blur, you want to enable your 3D layer switch. The reason we're doing that is so we can move things in a 3D space, makes it a bit easier instead of scaling. Then again, set the keyframes for your position here, this third axis. Again, you're only seeing that because we're now 3D layer. This is your Z axis, the blue one. You take that and it'll sort of launch the layer past the camera. Again, keep that motion blur on. You can get cool little stuff like this. Where you have these layers sort of shooting away. It gets a little bit crazy, hard to follow along with, um, but look at the editing that we're doing. It's crazy, a lot of fast stuff happening, a lot of different layers. The layer structure and the steps are going to reflect that. So again, pick and choose the information, any little things like the 3D layers or the alpha mat, all the little things I'm telling you, pay attention to those as opposed to the steps to recreate this specific thing. 
All right, so let's talk about creating those effects we just showed you um, on a more complex scene here, like someone moving around with a ton of movement. And we'll even start talking about some of these transitions, uh, such as taking these alpha silhouettes that we just showed you and uh, transitioning into them, doing things like that. So in After Effects, you have your footage. To be able to mask out these moving scenes, we're going to use the Roto Brush tool. So to use the Roto Brush tool, you want to double click on your footage and just make sure that you are in a layer. So up here, you see how it still says composition. If it's still saying composition, double click again until you are in that layer. Now I don't need to do the masking for this entire sequence here. So I'm just going to click Control Shift D, go back into the comp, scroll to where this clip ends. And again, I'll just double click in here, make sure double click into the layer and Control Shift D. So I have the little chunk cut out here that I would like to rotoscope for this scene. So what I'm going to do here is again in my layer, I'm going to go up in the top left and grab my roto brush tool. And I'm going to use this green brush here and just color in the area that I would like to mask out. So we're going to try and isolate the subject from the background. Now what you can do here is hold down alt and you see if I hold down alt, my brush turns from green to red. You want to kind of cut around and try and get this purple line around your subject as best as possible. You see, just making a bit of adjustments here. If you need to, in your effect controls, you can add a tiny bit of feather. So once you have the purple line around your subject using your red and green brush, what you wanna do is just click page down on your keyboard to move to the next frame. This, and if this purple line messes up at all, you just wanna use those brushes to make any adjustments to fix it. So for example, whenever the line messes up here, just add it in and just go through. All right, guys, so once you've made all of your roto brush adjustments for the composition, you want to just hold down control alt zoom in. You want to set this gray bar here. It's a little bit easier on the newer versions of After Effects, depending on which version you are using to see the bar. But you want to line up the beginning to wherever this square starts here. It's where you made your first brush stroke and you want to position to the end here. This is where we made our last brush stroke and end the gray bar right there. So this is the area that we'd like to freeze. You can go ahead and just click this freeze button right here. And After Effects will isolate the area that we marked out. So once your process is complete, you need to go back into the composition up here in the top left to see the results. And there we go. You can see if I toggle transparency, now have a nice little cutout. And that pretty much is the masking step. If you remember those three main steps to be able to pull off a lot of this stuff, that's a much easier way to do masking. You see, even with all the motion and the motion blur, you get pretty solid, you get pretty solid results, especially once you're in full speed. If you need to, you can select that, go to your effect controls. You can change around the feather if you really need to. You can contrast shift edge, reduce chatter if you get a little bit of shaky edges, and you can even check on use motion blur um, and that'll help as well. So now that we have this clip isolated, what we can do is select it, click control D to duplicate it. And again, you want to bring back your background. So on this layer that we just duplicated, we'll name this uh, clone or subject or whatever. And then on your background layer, all you need to do is just delete the rotor brush effect from your effect control. So just click delete and everything's back to normal. But again, now we have that isolated clone, which if I grab it, I can move it around and do whatever. You can do some of those other techniques that we were showing you uh, early on, such as adding motion blur, such as making it a 3D layer and making it shoot at the camera or whatever. So for example, what I could do is open up my transform here. I could just turn on all our keyframes, shift a bit and just move it over. So something like that. And again, check on your motion blur here. So with toggle switches and modes like that, and we can have some quick little swivel effects going on there, some quick speed effects. And if you want to, you can click Control D and change these layers up however you want, add different effects. So I'll just move the transform keyframe so we can kind of see that there. And add your fill effect. Make it any color you'd like. And you can even add the little alpha matting that we were talking about before. So let's say it swivels out. Control shift D to kind of split that layer. And on this split layer, we'll rename this to alpha transition. And let's bring that alpha transition down here above only the background. And on alpha transition, what we're going to do is we'll apply the fill effect. We'll make that black. 
might as well click Control Shift D, just line up that cut. And on this background layer, in that background alpha, go to the track mat here and make it alpha mat. And again, do whatever you want to with this. Uh, you can put in your second scene, for example. So I could delete this background alpha and I could just bring in, so we'll bring in another scene here. So again, if you wanna make that transition, let's name this. So here's background, we'll name this background two. Or you can name it scene one, scene two, whatever. We could bring in our second scene. So again, we have a transition right here. We already have this uh, silhouette thing that we set up with the alpha. Take background two, set the track mats like this, where you can see the scene going through. You wanna bring this background back and you can either duplicate or just drag this out. But there you go, you can have your clone kind of swivel out, transform into this alpha where you can see the next scene in the silhouette of uh, what's going on here. And it's as easy as just taking that alpha transition layer, going to your transform, set some keyframes here, and we'll just scroll to the end, take our scale and scale it up. So that's simple to make a little alpha transition with our motion blur. I think that looks really cool. You can use this, you can use the shape of what's going on. You can use the motion blur. It's a really cool way just to have this interesting transition. And, all right, so moving through the list here, it's a pretty simple one. You see, again, you have our rotoscope. You see the alpha transition we just talked about right there. And they use that in a lot of different ways. But this effect here where you just have these clones kind of swiveling off. Again, you can use just normal motion keyframes with the motion blur uh, like we showed you earlier to be able to do that. But another cool little effect here, save you some time. Um, what I did was just take the normal clone layer that we had transform out here and I just cut it right there and we'll just apply the offset effect onto this. Now what I'm going to do before I apply offset because you see how this kind of cuts off, I'm going to right click and pre-compose this, just move it all into a new comp and we'll just name this offset clone. All right, so control shift D, cut that right there. So on this new pre-comp layer, we'll just drop in offset. Click shift center two, we'll set a keyframe at the beginning position. We'll just drag to right before the alpha mat starts and we'll just start cranking up this value like crazy. Now to add in the blurring here, for some reason motion blur doesn't really work with the offset. You guys can drop in a directional blur effect onto there and you can just set the direction to the direction that you're offsetting. So I'll put it to 90 degrees and you can either keyframe the blur length or just kind of set it automatically to be blurred. So there you go, same exact thing. And you can have those revolving around automating pretty easily. Another thing I wanna talk about here, pretty important and uh, steps away from the craziness. If you ever wanna control the movement of the camera, like for example, camera is not doing too much. You can always select all these layers once you're done doing whatever. You can right click and you can pre-compose them. Again, you can always pop in here and change any of that if you need to. But in this pre-comp, all we have to do is right click on our gray space and create a new camera. And then make sure that this pre-comp here, whatever you name it, you can name it like final comp, is a 3D layer. So again, toggle switches and modes, turn on your 3D layer switch. And from here, you can open up your camera. You can click C on your keyboard just to cycle through these uh, different camera controls. So there's your 3D, rotate, uh, pan left and right, and zoom, different zooming in and out. So say for example, pops up, you wanna kinda have something like this. You can have a pop in and click reset. So a pretty quick example of that, uh, but you can again also enable motion blur for that. You'll have motion blur from all the camera movements as well. So it's a nice way to add that motion blur movement and control what's going on in the scene. You can snap between different things that are going on. All right guys, so again, for time's sake, I'm not gonna show you everything. A lot of it is uh, using a lot of the tools that I showed you just utilized in different ways. For example, just these little transform effects on the background with some motion blur, isolating the subject, duplicating, um, changing things like making it grow, whatever, and doing some different creative things with masking, like we showed you when the screen split, the exact same concept, uh, but using circular masks like here and creating different custom movements for the different layers. That's all things that you can do on your own using the exact same steps that we've been talking about. I don't want to show you every little tiny uh, thing that you have to do because again, it's up to you guys in experimenting. So I do want to talk about this part because I think it's pretty cool. They isolate just that item using this mask. They add some custom rotation and movement and they use that to sort of 
uh, transition seamlessly into the next scene. They also do a bit of roto brush here um, and just add some different effects onto the subject. Again, same exact thing. We use that roto brush to mask out a specific thing and then applying some different effects. We'll pop in here and I'll just show you some of these effects that they dropped onto our clone. One of them is the Colorama effects. And I've talked about this effect specifically uh, in a lot of different videos. You can use this in a bunch of different ways. Once you've dropped it in your effect controls, you go to input phase, sorry, output cycle, and you have all these different preset palettes, which you can use for a lot of these different uh, interesting, colorful blending looks. But you would take that, maybe drop in a curves, color grade that a tiny bit, drop in a noise just to add some of that green, and you could add in a flicker. If you have any flicker presets, you could use that. So if you don't have flicker, you just look up a little exposure effect, drop it on there, and you could just keyframe your exposure right here. And what you do is just drag or go page down, put it up, page down, put it down, page down, put it up. And again, page down is just moving down one frame. So you're moving one frame and you're just um, bumping up that exposure and it creates this little flicker effect. So very easy to do on your own without any presets. And if you wanted that echo as well, I'm pretty sure that's the majority of what they used here. I think that looks pretty cool. Uh, just some miscellaneous things you can drop on the clones. Of course, you can look through my channel, find a bunch of different things in After Effects that you can experiment with. And on my website as well, we actually have a bunch of these After Effects Max Novak um, DK presets that use Colorama uh, a ton. So if you want some preset looks that you can just drag and drop and save you some time, a lot of them have a lot of interesting, cool animation going on. You guys can check out some of these animated looks. If you look at the link below, here's another one that's black and gray. Same with red, night and day. You've got your animated RGB where this cycles through all the different RGB colors. And this one's pretty sick as well, where you kind of have this um, crazy RGB like camouflage or whatever. So check that out if you are interested. All right, guys. So at this point, I've talked about the majority of the tools and techniques that you can use to create a lot of the effects that you see in this music video. I'm not going to go through all the rest of the different um, ways that it is used because again it's the exact same tools that i just showed you just used in different ways just by being creative by transforming things around and by changing things up and i hope that this helped you in some way and taught you some cool new things you can do within after effects as always guys thank you so much for watching thank you so much for supporting and i'll see you guys in the next one.